Hey there, and welcome to a musician reacts. And today we're going to check out a heavy metal cover of the song Ruma Kita by God Bless. Now, the reason I came across this was because uh, Josephine Alexandra just recently did a cover of this song. Alec Bartar's done a cover of it. I've done a collaboration with Alec Bartar on his uh, version. Uh, Felix Awan has just done a live performance of this song. And I was initially thinking, well, maybe I can get all three of them and put it all together into a single collaboration. Then I thought, well, what can I do to put my rock spin on it? And I was just trying to come up with ideas. And as I was looking for other people that done Rima Kito covers to see if there was any other fingerstyle players, maybe put it into a big, um, big video, I came across these guys. Um, I thought, hey, some guys doing heavy metal version of this song, got to check it out. I want to see how they've done it. I know the song, um, so I want to see how they put this all together. Now, if you like this video, please do subscribe, click the bell icon, like and share. This is, of course, uh, Sanka Records, which is kind of weird. It's, is that a band name or is that just a group of guys that run a record label? That's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's go check this song out. This is God Bless Rumakita. Uh, by the Sanka Records. This is a rock metal cover. Three, two, one. Go! Power metal. This is almost like rock rock, man. Good sound. Time. That. I swear that hi hat sounds replaced.
There we go. So that was Sanka Records and God Bless Aruma Kita. They did a great job. Sounded awesome. Uh, there was a couple of bits I didn't know if it really fitted with me. The dun 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 not too sure with some of the other parts whether that naturally flowed um but it 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 worked it just kind of for me just this it made the song feel a little bit more disjointed it's look it's almost like the song had an identity crisis of what sort of sort of rock metal song it wanted to be um but it still sounded great as a whole um I was listening out. So one of the things I was talked about there, I was listening out for the drums. So obviously you can clearly see in the video that uh, they're not mic'd up or anything like that. This is just playback. So this is just them playing along to the, the recording for the video. My guess from listening to that is that everything was recorded at homes so separately, not in a professional studio. Uh, the drums were played on an electric kit. Uh, and then he's just recorded the live drums for the video, but he played it on like I do on electric kit. And the reason I say that is the giveaway for me is the hi-hat. The hi-hat has got too much of a consistent sound. So when you're hitting a hi-hat, hi-hat symbol, you've got, you've got all this room on the hi-hat. Now, depending on if you hit it dead on the side, dead on the top, nearer the bell part of the symbol, you're going to get a slightly different tone. Uh, also, if you're playing an open symbol, depending on how open it is, if you're slightly closing it, etc., you're going to get slight frequencies. And if you hear any drummer playing consistently on a hi hat, you're going to hear slightly different. It, you've also got a little bit more uh, sustain going on. You've got more reverb bouncing off of it, so you're going to get different frequencies. Because if you're if it's still wobbling, as so if basically it's a good technical term, if the symbol is still wobbling and you hit it again, it cuts the last signal out and it brings the next one in. What we heard on there was a consistent ch, 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 exactly the same frequency all the way through. Now, there's a couple of ways if you're using electronic drum kits to get around that. You can actually have your program do what's called humanize feel. And what this does is it just throws in basically variances. So it changes the slight pitch every so often and it basically makes it feel like you've made hit it slightly off or something like that. And it makes it feel like there's more of a human being playing it. This is more for if you're programming drums, because uh, you can still get that humanized feel, especially if you're using open and close, because the drum pads do have impact, so you get velocities. Unless you click it on and turn it all onto what's called fixed velocity, which means all your hits have the same registered hit pattern, and then it sounds completely computer driven. Um, but that makes me think that he recorded, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, he did play it. He definitely played the drums. Uh, you can see that from his playback. But he recorded on an electronic drum kit. I would also say from the guitars, they sound like they were direct inputted in. And it was done through an amp sim versus a mic'd up amp is what I would guess. For bass and for, for uh, guitar, both of those were done that way. Um, that's that's my guess. I'd love to, for, to know from Sanka Records if that is the case. And I think they recorded all their parts at home and then they came into the studio just to record the video that's my guess but uh they did a great job and i thoroughly enjoyed checking it out now if you like this video please do subscribe click the bell icon like and share and that of course is how musician reacts